I talk to people and I say, I don't care where you are in your life, as big as you can think, visualize, dream, that's as far as you can go if you're willing to put in the effort and rechange your own programming. All right, everyone, welcome to the Multifamily More Virtual Meetup. Uh, this is an interactive podcast uh, where we have a goal to provide all of our members with access to high-level guests focused on real estate mindset or really anything in between. Uh, here's how it's going to work tonight. I have, uh, I have our guest on. I'm going to introduce him in just a moment. Um, what I would ask for you to do is in the, in the um, chat box, uh, throw in questions, comments, whatever the case may be. Uh, if you would change it to all panelists and attendees, that helps. If you only want to go to panelists, that's fine. We'll, we'll take your questions that way. But for everyone to see kind of the, uh, the interaction will be helpful. Uh, to start, I want to say thank you to all of you for attending. And if you would, just start throwing in there, you know, where you're coming from. I'm always curious to see where, uh, where folks are. I'm in Michigan, but we tend to get people from around the country popping in here. So I'd love to see uh, who's out there and where you're from. So please put that in the chat box and we'll go from there. So that's how it's going to work tonight. Um, here we go. Fort Lauderdale, Northern Michigan, Richmond, Virginia, another Michigan. So coming in. So that's great. Uh, tonight's uh, podcast is sponsored by the Multifamily and More YouTube channel. So by me, essentially, which is fun. All right. You go there, you'll find Matt Aitchison, Marcos Jacober, uh, Joe Fairless. They're talking Airbnb, tax lien, tax deed, uh, uh, multifamily property and more. Of course, we are multifamily and more. And soon you'll have this video and also a guy named Albert Burris. If you don't know who he is, very exciting. I'm going to have him in August. So coming up, uh, president of McKinley, he himself owns 4.6 billion dollars worth of uh worth of commercial real estate and multifamily property with a b and doesn't syndicate i don't know how the hell he does that but we're going to find that out once we get him on here so real high level guy and i'm uh, I'm, I'm glad he's going to be coming on but uh tonight I, you know there's there's really two guests that we've had so far tonight's and one other that have made instrumental impacts in my life so it's a real honor to be able to introduce who i have sitting next to me on the screen here so i'm going to give his bio uh, uh, which is that Rock grew up in a small Canadian farm near Montreal, uh, later became a self-made multimillionaire running several successful businesses and six award-winning Remax agencies, which is incredible. Upon achieving financial sex, uh, success, Rock dove deep into personal development and started studying with and spending time with, ready for these names, Tony Robbins, T. Harv Eker, Deepak Chopra, Jack Canfield, and Mr. Seven Habits himself, Stephen Covey, what, and more. <laughs> There's more than that. I'm given the short list in the interest of time. After assimilating all he'd learned and talking with people from all walks of life who were seeking more too, he founded Rock Thomas International uh, to bring the best of the best to the world. His programs blend his extensive knowledge about personal development with cutting edge success formulas designed to produce whole life wealth, something we'll talk about in detail, I'm sure, tonight. He's a best-selling author right here. Your Epic Life Blueprint, pick it up if you haven't already. Great book. Uh, he's a coach. He's a keynote speaker. He's an investor, of course. Uh, he's a globe trotter coming to us tonight from uh, across the globe, actually. Uh, and he's founder of the I Am Movement, which is very powerful. And again, we'll talk about that tonight. Uh, he is my mentor in many ways. Uh, he's really, he's truly been instrumental in the change that I've had personally over the last year uh, in particular. Uh, he's also my GoBundance brother now, so proud to call him that. So I'm overjoyed, over the moon, happy to welcome you, uh, Rock Thomas. Well, I'm excited to be here. It's two o'clock in the morning here in Dubrovnik, Croatia. First time here, but uh, absolute gem. We'll probably end up doing an event here, not a, being here. It's so beautiful. And that's one of the things that I set as a goal six years ago when I read the book, uh, Tim Ferriss's 4-Hour Workweek, is how can you live from a laptop, travel around the world, and inspire others to have freedom too. And I think that's the, the route that you've taken is how do you create passive income? So, you know, I think what most people want is choice, choice to be able to do what they want, when they want, with whom they want. And we live in a, in a world where you can actually take your family now and travel and do things. So, um, so I'm here to talk about, you know, how can we inspire other people to live a life by choice? Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're living it right now, which is incredible. And we were talking before, you know, more, most people got on here about, um, you know, where you are, how you're just kind of, yeah, you know, we're going to go to Barcelona, then over Portugal, then back to Canada. You know, you can live your life on your terms uh, because of the wealth and the passive income that you've created. So where I want to start, Rock, is kind of where you are 
today and then maybe pack that back or, or you know, kind of go backwards from there. Um, so you, you mentioned horizontal income. You've been very diligent in, uh, in uh, pursuing that. Um, and you're at a very high level where most of us want to be. Um, what does your investment portfolio look like today, if you're willing to share that? Uh, and what has that, what, we talked about travel, what else has that afforded you? So if you could talk about where you're investing, how you're investing, what is that, what is that and what has that done for you? Well, you know, I think every time I've made my investment, it felt like a difficult investment. And I look back and I go, I wish I had, you know, made more of them. There's no real estate that I bought that I, I wish I hadn't kept. I've sold some of it. And now I have about probably $15 million worth of real estate that is combined between commercial and residential and multifamily and student housing. And um, I have investments all over North America. Um, I often invest with some of my students or some of my members either in GoBundance or in M1. They present me with an opportunity. I own something that I think it's a level unit out in um, Winnipeg in Canada that I, ironically, I was speaking at an event for Edna Keep and she had me do a shark tank on stage the following day after my talk. And I bought this 11 unit on stage shark tank style. And um, we're about to literally got an email yesterday where I put $400,000 in and made 8% on the 400,000, got 50% equity. I'm about to pull out the 400,000 and my equity will have grown by about 150 and 8% return on my money for the year. So I love to do those. That's where you put your money in for a while. Then we improve the property and you pull your capital out and then you just let it run. And that gives you an infinite return as you know. So that's what it looks like. I may get 385 instead of the 400 out, but then I'll have a property that we bought for around 900, put in a hundred thousand and it's appraised at one, three, one, three, two, five right now. So my upside is about equity of about 160 ish and my capital into it after a year will be say 15,000 or maybe zero. That's incredible. So I've done that. I've done some investments with Ian. I've done some with Nick. I've done some um, down in, um, in Montreal itself with GoBundance Brothers uh, with student housing, where one of them, I, I just put in $300,000 and I got a 19.5% return. It's like a hard money loan for three years. And the reason I like that one is that if you put money in and you take it out, then what, what does the government want to do? Mm. They want to tax you. So this was a three-year investment. So I got three years rolling of 19.5%. So I put in 300 and I'm going to get about 460,000 out of it um, after three years. And I did absolutely nothing <laughs> right. because I knew people that um, do great investments. But my preference is to buy and hold like the one that we have with Edna. Um, I started, as you may know, from my Bigger Pockets conversation very first property I bought was 62500 in Quebec City uh, in Canada that I bought with $2,000 down on a Visa credit card because I just bankrupt the restaurant. And I, I really believe that you got to get out there and you got to knock on doors, you got to talk to people because as much as some people don't believe it, there's people that are willing to do vendor financing and I had no credit and I managed to buy this property that cash flowed because there were some handicapped people in it. And I was making big money for me. I was earning as a flight attendant $1,000 a month, but this property was throwing off $2,400 a month back in the days when I, you know, I was in my 20s. So it's a long time ago, but that was a lot of money. And I lived in the property as well. So if, you're, if people are starting out, you know, you can hack, you can be creative. Uh, I lived in, um, you know, in the up, upper level and I had people actually in the lower level. And then I renovated the property on weekends. And I didn't have anybody to take care of the property while I was working, the people there. So there's something, you know, I tell people say yes and figure it out later. A lot of times people stop because they don't know the how. They don't have all the resources. They don't have the time, the money. They can't find the deal. But you got to move. I say, you know, five, four, three, two, one, like Mel Robbins says, take step forward, take action, move into it, get involved. And before you know it, you'll be in a deal. So there's a lot of deals I've been involved in. Uh, the commercial deal that I think changed my life was when I was running my real estate franchise is the building itself that I was in was owned by a gentleman from the Middle East. And he just took a liking to me. 
I think he just wanted a young entrepreneur to succeed. And I think the harder you work, the luckier you get, Jamie. And every once in a while, somebody's going to come along and go, you know what? Um, I'll help you out. I bought that property with $150,000 down and some vendor financing for a second mortgage. And the bank loaned me on the first. It was scary. It was everything I had. Like I scraped every penny together to purchase this place, but I bought it for $781,000 in 1999. So that's 19 years ago. Today it's worth almost $4 million. I have a $1.7 million mortgage on it. So I have some equity in the property, but it makes me about $20,000 a month. I have it property managed by the girl that runs my real estate office. So I really do nothing on the property. And after five years, I was able to refinance it, take $600,000 out. So I put in 150, I took 600 out. Then I went and bought more real estate. And then five years later, I refinanced it again. I took 900 out. I bought more real estate. And two years ago, I took another 900 out and bought more real estate. And now I have equity in it and it gives me $20,000 a month. So literally, if you can live off of $20,000 a month, I'd never have to work again a day in my life just from that one purchase 19 years ago. So I, I like to tell that story because people are like, oh my God, you know, I don't know if I have the money. You got to fight to have the money or fight to be resourceful to get other people's money. Get in the game. Don't wait to buy real estate. Buy real estate and wait. And your future will be abundant. So I'm very fortunate that I made that decision. I didn't make it because I was incredibly intelligent. I made it because it just made sense to me to own the real estate that I was in. And I probably made more money off of that property than I have off of running the real estate company itself. That's a, so there's a lot. I wrote down a few things. So I'm going to try to try to get to all of these if I can. And again, for those joining, please post your questions in the, uh, in the chat box. Um, you, you said about don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait, which I love. That's a great, great line. I've heard you say that before. And it's so true. People talk about this market, especially in the multifamily market so hot, right? Cap rates are really low right now. It's hard to buy. It's hard to find. And of course, there's the, the conventional wisdom of, well, you know, hey, you know, you just got to scrimp and claw to find the deal, right? There's deals out there. You got to find them. How are you doing that now? Are you, how are you finding deals in this market? Or are you sort of sitting back and waiting cash in a cash position before you acquire after any sort of, you know, correction that people are assuming is coming? So, I no longer have the passion myself to be out knocking on doors and looking for deals. So I just tell people in my world um, when they have deals to present them to me. So I get people sending them to me all, all the time and I either decide to, to jump in them or renegotiate what they've offered. Cause sometimes, you know, they're just, they're looking for hard money, but I want hard money uh, and I want equity. So I just look at deals that people present to me and I tell them, you know, my ideal is to make, 15, 20% plus some equity. And that's could be fairly difficult in some cases, depending, but I'm very quick to make a decision. So I say to you, if, if you want quick access to money and you're doing a deal that you're willing to maybe take a little bit less on and you're willing to um, get in the game, maybe it's gonna give you some credibility, it's gonna get your feet wet, it's gonna leverage you to something else. Um, I'm not the cheapest money, but I'm really accessible to make a quick decision and I can write a check and close the deal within 24 hours. That's valuable to some people. So that's kind of how I've been doing it. Just, just put deals in front of me and I'll, I'll tell you what I want and it'll be a quick answer. So that's how I've been doing it recently. I, my son's a real estate agent, so I do deals with him. We own some student housing. So he's an easy go-to because of the speed of trust, right? When you're dealing with people that you know, I don't want to have to do a lot of vetting. So if you present a deal to me and it's not well presented, I'll probably just say no right off the, the get go. Don't make me work too hard. Um, I'm at a different stage in my life, Jamie. Uh, you know, so way back in the day, I was willing to get it out today. I want kind of like, you know, the, the sit back and just make it easy for me kind of deals. Now, you know, that uh, the don't make me work hard is um, I, that's, that's, you know, that's sage advice, whether you're an investor or you're, you're an employer, if somebody's at a W-2 job, I know for me with a, having a large organization, I, yeah, I don't want to work too hard to figure out what's going on, right? Bring me, bring me the red meat. Let me see what the issue is. Come to me with everything you need or with everything I need. And let me make a call on this, right? Like with, with the most, most succinct information I can get. 
Uh, so that resonates. I like that. Don't make me work too hard. I don't think I've ever said that, but I think I'm going to start using it now. So anyone who might report to me, be, be mindful. <laughs> but but um, <laughs> um, so, real, so, so I understand this because you mentioned like Winnipeg, uh, around the United States, different parts of the country. Um, the question that comes to mind is how are you, how are you managing investments remotely? Um, but is it a matter of you, you have a, a, you don't, you have a, is it that you have a completely passive stake in these investments and that it's not that you're actively managing any of these? And was there a time that you were actively managing everywhere? Yeah. I need the long distance ones. I don't manage at all. Um, many of the properties I've purchased, I've never even seen. Um, because to me, I look at real estate just as a return on my money. So I could own Apple stock in the stock market and I can, you know, make a return or I can own a piece of real estate in Iowa and get a return. So it's really the person I'm dealing with because I want, you know, it's like bet on the jockey, not the horse. If it's somebody I trust, um, then I don't even need to see the property. Now I'll look at the property on paper. If it's a big deal, I'm working on a larger 200 unit uh, with an individual right now, I'll fly down and I'll look at that deal myself um, just so I feel really good about it. I want to sleep at night. <laughs> I've had some deals that have not gone so well. And I have about four or five right now where I loan money that was supposed to take 90 days or 180 days. And some of them, I've got one that's into its sixth year, a 90 day loan that's into its sixth year. And I had interest at 10%. And after 90 days, it goes to 20%. So I've been making 20% of my money for six years, but I haven't collected all of it yet. So we'll see. Uh, gotcha. Right. But I have liens on the properties and I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, man, dude, you can't tell me in two weeks again for another four years. <laughs> so there's, you know, there's some deals that have gone really, really well. Most of them have done really, really well, but I don't, I'm not really into the management of the property. Again, at this stage, I'm looking for things that are turnkey, that are easy, that give me a great return. And people that um, are in situations where they, they want to do deals quickly, they're usually willing to pay more. And those are the ones that I'm looking at. Gotcha. Okay. Um, you mentioned entrepreneurship a moment ago, and it made me think about, well, I guess it made me think about your streams of income. So you're well known to have 30 plus streams of income, maybe mm -hmm. 40 plus at this point. I don't even know. So can you, can you give a sense of what those streams are? I mean, is it, is it, is it 35 properties or is it multiple business, what, what, whatever that might be? Uh, and if it is multiple businesses along with property, how do you manage that? How do you structure your organization to manage all of this so that you're, you know, able to, able to operate everything? Maybe not as well as I could, but <laughs> um, I'd say that probably 15 streams of the revenue come from real estate, okay. uh, from the various pieces of real estate. I also have two Keller Williams offices. I had three, but one um, went bankrupt. I had a partner that I believe, you know, just made some mistakes. So I invested 30,000 there, lost the 30,000. We're in a lawsuit right now. Um, so that uh, is, is one that didn't pan out so well. But in Keller Williams, what happens when you own a market center is you get paid. I get paid a salary for running the market center. I also get paid dividends and profit. Um, I also get paid a, um, a profit share from the, the uh, market center as well. And you get paid referral fees from referring agents. So there's four or five streams of income right in one market center of different mm -hmm. levels. I have um, a small company that I flip properties with, with my son. So I get some revenue from flipping properties. I also have um, an old real estate business. I was a real estate agent at one point in time. So I've handed that off to him. So every once in a while I get a referral fee because he's taken over the business. So when there's something that's generated from leads that I had in the past, um, as a salesperson, we just had one that I referred him four years ago that finally they listed the property. So then I get a referral check from that business. So when you add up just in that area, you're looking at probably six or seven streams of income. The other major area that I do, Jamie, is I'm really good at, at uh, marketing other people's products. So when I find somebody that I believe in, then I will market their product um, and I'll get paid a affiliate fee for that. Um, it might be in terms of a Tony Robbins or um, somebody that is maybe teaching a course online. And when I promote that, 
then I get an affiliate fee. And I only obviously, you know, promote the ones that I believe in. And I don't really do it for the affiliate fee. But when you work in the world we work in today online, there's so many people that want access to other people's databases that it just makes sense that we share. Mm -hmm. I have other people that, um, you know, as, as I have M1 and GoBundance, Anybody that you refer to GoBundance, you get paid an affiliate fee. We designed it that way because I believe that influencers should be compensated. If you have the ability to um, make people aware of a product that is valuable to them, why should you not receive an affiliate fee for that? Because you're able to initiate that conversation. And it's, you know, I've, I've been probably in 10 multi-level marketings from 19 years old in Amway. And the idea is that when you help other people, then you get compensated. So when you help other people find a teacher, a mentor, or a product that's going to shape and move their life, the world's structured today that you get compensated. So I have a bunch of those different affiliates. Uh, Matty A might be one of them as an example. If I send somebody to him, then he sends me a check um, you know, weeks or months later. At least I hope he does because I don't check, but my staff is supposed to check for me. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's the part maybe I could do a little bit better on is, is micromanaging the details of that, looking at everyone. I look more at the bigger picture of my financials. So those are the ones off the top of my head. I invest in the stock market. I'm in a hedge fund. Um, I do hard money loans. I have about $3 million in hard money loans in various components. One of the ones I told you about that I'm waiting for six years. Um, and that'll be any, that ranges anywhere from probably 30,000 to maybe half a million dollars in different projects. So, you know, I'll have one mature um, and $400,000 will come out. Maybe it ends up being 480,000 or 450 or depending on the length of time. And I roll it over looking for the next deal. Um, in the stock market, I have some big money with a buddy of mine, and then I have some smaller money that I play with and um, invest in, you know, stuff for myself. I, I wouldn't say I've done really, really well on the ones for myself just because sometimes I take my, my eye off of it. And then before you know it, you know, I don't have the stop losses in and um, something happens. The CEO ends up, you know, uh, committing fraud or getting killed in a plane and then the stock goes down 30 percent. You're like, ah, what the heck? But um, those are the majority of the ones off the top of my head. I, I have three books. I have um, audio programs. I have online products, probably 10 online products. So when you add all those up, it comes into, in and around 37 right now. There's some that fall off and some that I add. Um, so that's, that's the majority of them. But it, it's been, wow. you know, add bit by bit. And um, I would encourage people that are looking to do that just look at the next one that you can add. And before you know it, you got all these boats in the race and I turn on my computer and you know, $2,000 more came in from here and 150 from there. And then Amazon sends me a check and it's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's incredible. And so now you're, you have an assistant. I know somebody that, uh, that you rely upon to kind of manage the day to day, I would assume. Do you have a, like an operating officer for your entire company or is it sort of depending on the company you have different structures in place for that? Yeah, I don't have, a, I, I have a, a part-time CFO that oversees all the financials now. That's something I've added recently. I had a, a little bit of an incident recently with my a, accountant who mysteriously disappeared for a month, which is an absolute nightmare that happened oh a boy. couple of months ago. And I'm still licking the wounds from that, quite frankly. Not that he took any money or anything. He think he had a personal meltdown. He just stopped writing checks. He stopped doing management cost me this year an extra $80,000 in taxes because he just didn't do things he said he was going to do. So sometimes those things happen and you know, you have to ask yourself what's great about this and reframe that. And now I have a, a really, really elite team in, um, and maybe in some ways I was being a little bit cheap with him. He was managing three other files, uh, or clients and, um, he wasn't costing me a lot. I'm probably paying three times what I was paying, paying him today, but I have an absolute elite team. So that's, um, that's a leveling up for me. I have generally the way I work things, Jamie, is I usually master it myself. And then I, I guide the other person to do what I did. And then I leave the room. So if you look at my mastermind group, go abundance, um, I was the um, CEO and the C CVO of that group 
for the first two and a half years. And today it's run completely by other individuals. And, um, you know, I don't really do anything. And it's completely operated by somebody else. So that's, that's a stream of revenue for me as well. And M1, the mastermind, you know, where we march people to their first million, I've got Ken, who is now the COO, who virtually does everything I used to do. So I usually work myself out of a job, Jamie. And then once I've done that, then I become the, a resource. And I try to model myself in a tiny little way after Richard Branson is find the talent, give them the resources, and then get out of their way. And when I do that, then I have time freedom. So I have, you know, and I also have an Airbnb operation I forgot about. So I have different people that run these organizations and I have, you know, 50,000 coming in here a year, 100, 200, 500, whatever. Um, today I make over six figures a month passively pretty much, um, which six years ago was a dream for me and it grows more and more. And then I can come in and be gasoline on the fire. So whoever's, whoever's doing the operation, if I choose to come in and spend 10 hours a week in that organization, things are going to accelerate rapidly. But if I don't, then I know it's on cruise control and it's creating revenue and we're adding value, hopefully to the people in that, in, in that business or the clients. Yeah. And you spend a ton of time, um, I guess, just giving back, right? I mean, you know, to the masterminds that you're a part of, uh, to others, you know, uh, you, you are in a, you have the epic, blah, epic blue light. Epic, epic life blueprint. Yep. Thank you. Blueprint community that you have online. You have, you know, M1, you have GoBundance, and you're very present and visible in all of that, revealing secrets around how you organize yourself on a weekly basis with things like the Sunday system and all of that. Why? Why do you do that? What is that? What does that drive or where does that come from? And what is it doing, I guess, for you, if anything? Well, I think you've, you figured this out is it's really fun to give back. It's really fun to share your wisdom. Um, watching people have success is really great. When you get to a level of fulfillment where you've got, you know, a roof over your head and basic needs. I, I have trouble spending my money, quite frankly. I'm not, I'm not a person who, I'm not a car person. I've got a, a, an older car. Um, my kids are growing up. I, I don't really need to buy, you know, clothing or furniture. So I spend like 5% of what I earn and I live well. So what fulfills me is giving back, is helping people that are not quite at the stage I'm at. And, you know, that's why I started GoBundance. That's why I started M1 is this journey to the whole life millionaire. And I'm toying with the phrase now, the, the organic whole life millionaire. And the reason I put the word organic in there is I think is it, it's, a, it's a grassroots but it's also healthy, right? We talk about, you can go to the store today and you can, buy, you can buy vegetables or you can buy organic vegetables. And to me, um, M1 is, an or, is a healthy environment where you learn that you can have freedom to do what you want, but, but don't give up your health. So I'm 56 years old. I consider myself pretty healthy. I'm pretty active. And I believe that you could have rich and quality relationships. So how do you do all of those things? Well, you've got to be able to give back and have quality conversations around what's working. So all of these conversations are other people going, okay, what can I learn from somebody else that is maybe healthier or wealthier or happier than me? I believe we all want to connect and belong and matter. So where do people get a chance to do that? If you're working a nine to five, and you don't like your job because most people didn't end up choosing their career consciously, they ended up falling into it. They're spending 50% of their life in a place they're not really happy. And to me, that hurts me, that pisses me off. So I don't want people to end up being 45 and a millionaire because they follow the path on how to buy real estate, but they're diabetic and broke. So how do you get that whole life conversation, that organic conversation? So what I do is I spend time talking about things that worked for me, things I learned from other mentors, just the way you're doing this now with other people. So I get the, the, the juice I get is from helping other people and seeing people succeed. And in my organizations, it's giving other people the opportunity to have a career that they didn't have. You know, again, in GoBundance and M1, the people that are running it, these people were doing other things with their lives before I came along and talked about this kind of way of being masterminds have become a bit of a buzzword now. I don't know if you've noticed there's masterminds. It seems like everywhere, unless maybe it's just because my RAS is looking at it. 
but since we started go abundance it seems like everybody's got a mastermind on something and you know ours is unique in the way that ours is unique but yes. giving back and contributing is something i love to do yeah and you're good at it you're really good at it so uh talk about if you could for for those on the call you mentioned go abundance you mentioned m1 can you i, I want to dive into this a little bit more because uh, both have been life-changing for me and they start with, with what you've offered to me and many others in these communities. Can you explain what is M1, what is GoBundance with some, with some level of detail? And then we'll dive in a little bit on, on, uh, on some other stuff within that. Yeah, so GoBundance started six years ago when I was invited to a mastermind with 17 people in Colorado to go skiing, hang out and talk about business and, and be with high-minded conversation. If you've ever gone on a trip with um, a group of other tourists, sometimes you end up being in a group and some people um, are fast, some people are slow, but you go as fast as the slowest person. And that's happened to me many times. And the other thing is that you end up having generally superficial conversation with the next tourist, you know, as you go uh, hiking up a mountain, what have you. What I wanted was deep conversation on things that really matter. So I, I fell into this, this group of people with David Osborne and a few other people, and they were really hard charging entrepreneurs. Long story short, with my experience with Tony Robbins and with um, T. Harvecker and different mastermind groups, I thought it would be really cool if we formalized the way that, that these groups were being run. And so six of us kind of got together as a true spirit of mastermind from Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. When you have a common goal and you put all these minds together, you come up with something richer than if you were to do it on your own. And so we started to come up with code of conduct and some things that we wanted to do and the one sheet, the goal setting process, holding people accountable. And I noticed also from working with Tony Robbins for 17 years, Jamie, um, that people would go to an event and then they would come home on fire, ready to take on their life, um, having walked on fire and really reframed their limiting beliefs, ready to change that the way they're gonna approach things, but they went home and their environment stronger than their new belief system, their new habits, and they ended up coming back to the event two years later, not any further down the road. And I started to watch this pattern for over a decade and I thought, well, that sucks. You invest your time and money in changing and then you can't change because there's an anchor called your environment at home. So that's where we came up with these weekly pod meetings and these online communities so that you don't get drafted back into that cesspool of mediocrity called your, you know, your environment at home. A lot of the people that join these tribes are people that are leaders and lonely in their hometown. They're either in a small town where they're a big fish or they're number one in their company, but they can't share that with other people because other people feel bad. So they end up you know, being alone. Now they come into our community where we don't apologize for being awesome. And you can tell people that you just made $20,000 in the stock market in a day, or you closed a deal that you flipped and you made you know, $30,000 in three months when the guy's making $50,000 a year. So we created it so that people have a place to be great, people to celebrate. A place where you have the Roger Bannister effect where, you know, you're like, oh, can I do that? Well, the guy beside me just did it and he's no different than me. So maybe I can do it. And it's blossomed, obviously, because there's a need for it. And then out of that, we found that there's a group of people that weren't yet where they wanted to be financially. They weren't yet millionaires. So we created M1. And that group has a little bit more focus on the mindset piece. Because, Jamie, if you can't get the inner game right, if you can't get your inner uh, mindset to a place where you believe you can, well, then you believe that you can't and you won't take the action necessary. So the first thing that we work on is what kind of mindset do you need in order to be able to take the action? We work those gears. We get people focused on what are the decisions, beliefs, rituals, habits, routines that successful people have versus the ones that don't, people don't have. I'm working on a talk right now called Limitless, how to not be average. And People, most people are average. Most people eat two and a half times a week at fast food. Most people have a job and they have shitty routines. Most people are not energized and lit on fire. But when you look at the person beside you and they're doing the same thing, you think, well, I'm not that bad. And you keep on that, that habit. And then before you know it, it becomes who you are. So I'm all about saying, look, don't look at the person beside you. Look at a great individual, somebody like Jamie, who's changed and transformed his life and go, how do I have more of that? And then get a little disturbed at where you are 
and have a mentor who says, I'm comfortable with the future you, and here's how we're going to walk the mountain together. If you, Jamie, were to go to the bottom of Mount Everest with no experience and walk up the mountain with no preparation, just the best you could do, chances are within maybe two or three days, you'd be walking back down the mountain going, there's something I was missing. I need a tent, or I need more gear, or I need boots, or I need something, I need more food. And if you had to do that every time with no guide, with no help, you might have to, you'd get to four or five days and come back. You'd get to five or six days and come back because you don't know what you don't know. But in life, if you're willing to pay or invest money and time in a mentor, in a guide that's done it many, many times, the journey is going to be faster, more fun, safer, richer experience, more fulfilling. And that's really what I believe in is find somebody who's done it and get them to guide you to that destination you want. Otherwise, you're going to be frustrated and you're probably, most people will not go four or five times up Mount Everest, the same track over and over again. They'll be frustrated. They'll quit and they'll go, you know what? I'm not an entrepreneur. Just I'll do my nine to five. So I'm all about encouraging people to get to the top of their dreams, which is Mount Everest, but do it with somebody else that's done it before. No, that's, that's fantastic. Again, a lot there I was jotting down. I read this book called The Willpower Instinct by Kelly McDonigle. She's a, a, a professor in Stanford. And you mentioned about, um, you know, they see somebody else doing it around them. And so it seems okay for them. There's actually a study done uh, on obesity, how, how obese people actually feel thinner because they see other people around them that may be obese that are, are actually larger. And this isn't a, you know, not no knock on anybody, but it's just the study was fascinating that, you know, that you see what you see based on your surroundings. You are what you see around you essentially, right? Yes. Like you said, the RES, right? Your reticular activity, it sees what it wants to see. So if it sees other people around you eating fast food three times a week, well then you eat fast food three times a week. And, you know, I, I yeah, admittedly, that's me. That was me up until, up until last year when I finally sort of said to myself, I, I need something more uh, and found you and found uh, uh, the community that I'm in. And really, you know, not to get on a rant here, but when you, get, when you get into something like M1, when you get into something like GoBundance, which I'm privileged to be part of both, um, every week I'm on a call in each community with four to five really high level people, whether they're you know, making multiples of millions of dollars a year actively and or passively, um, whether they have 50, 60, 80, 90, 100 units or whatever that they're managing and, and uh, 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 you know, taking on passive income as a result. Um, whether they're, you know, I was telling you at the beginning, you know, every morning on WhatsApp, 5 a.m., I got three of my, my GoBundance brothers hitting me up like, I'm up, are you up, you know, kind of thing. You know, if you have any sense of like your own, your own accountability to others and yourself, then you're up. You know, this morning it was 420. I want to be the first one up. 420, not because of weed or anything, but just 420. <laughs> I was up at 420. Um, so yeah, you know, that was, that's, uh, that's the stuff that I, I never really truly grasped. Because honestly, like you said, and I want to get into, I want to get to the I am movement here in a second, but what, what, you, what you mentioned is tough to grasp, I think, sometimes. Like, wait a minute, you know, self-talk. Uh, you know, uh, loving myself more, like those sorts of concepts seem foo-foo, goofy, whatever. But as you start to affirm yourself, as you start to forgive yourself, as you start to do these things, these, these uh, you know, I guess surrender to the idea that somebody like yourself, who's figured out how to live life in a way that a lot of people like me and others really want to live life in the same way, like we, you're the model for what we want. It's like, all right, well, that means sitting down and visualizing a bigger life for myself. Let me, let me try that. I'll do that every day. And at some point, hopefully it takes, right? So, you know, the impact for me has been huge. I mean, you, you know, you know, know that more than anybody, like where I've gone from and to. Um, and it can, look, I'll tell everybody, you want to go to the M1 website. It's goM1.com, G-O-M-1.com. Go to the success stories. And I'm actually right on it. I didn't know this until recently. I guess I have a <laughs> <laughs> I have a video on there. So you can see me vulnerably going through my story. Um, and, and, you know, I'm not special. I mean, you know what I mean? Like I'm not, it, it didn't take some sort of uh, Herculean effort. It was just saying, all right, let me give a shot here to somebody in this space like rock uh, to, to teach me and guide me on what I should be doing, not questioning it, just doing it. And man, it was just amazing how over the course of that year, that March to a million, it, uh, 
there was transformation, huge, huge transformation in me and, and the results just sort of followed, you know, I, I can't, can't explain it any better than that for people that ask me. It's just, they follow. Well, yeah. Let me, let me give you an example. that's maybe really easy for people is I look at it as a successful mindset. If you look at um, Tom Brady or Tiger Woods or, or Roger Federer, people that are elite, they didn't get there overnight. Night. They got there with coaches, practice, deliberation, looking at distinctions. And I call it, so let's say you have a hundred marbles in your jar and a hundred marbles means that you're Michael Jordan and everybody wants to give you the ball with three seconds left in the game because they know they've seen your results. You get that by doing the little things right over and over again, the rituals or routines, getting up at 420 and, and doing your visualization, meditation, all the things that are, that are not common, they're uncommon. And you do them quietly for a while and you're adding these marbles to your jar. As you add the marbles, you make better decisions. You worry less. Something goes wrong. You respond better because you have now this fortitude within yourself. The biggest mistake I think that people make is that they don't understand that nothing in life has any meaning until you assign a meaning to it. If you have a flood in your basement, you have a flood in your basement. Is it good or is it bad? Only you decide if it's bad. Maybe you're going to get insurance money and you're going to rehab it and it's going to be better than ever. But if you whine and bitch about it, that's your identity. That's who you are. You're a whiner and a bitcher. You know, you're going to whine and bitch about getting a red light. You're going to whine and bitch about the guy who stole the parking spot from you. That's who you are. The words that follow I am follow you. So in our communities, as you know, what we focus on a lot is what's your uptime, right? When Tom Brady has one of his receivers go down, he doesn't go crying back to his coach and go, I don't think I can win the game. He now scans the territory and he goes, what are the resources I have? And now how do I become a hero? So what I teach is how do you, Jamie, become a hero in your environment? How does everybody become a hero with the resources that are available to them? And then what's missing? And I've come up with about 30 traits that you need as a winner that most winners have, which is 30 minutes a day of growing and learning, setting goals. Yes. Do they do it? Does a winner do that? Yes. Does a winner reframe well? Yes. Does a winner find a way to win no matter what? Yes. So then we look at each one of those, say 30 jars that have 10 marbles in it. And I go, where are you with your ability to reframe? I'm not very good at it. Well, then let's work on that. Where are you with your visualization skills? Do you think that Steph Curry visualizes? Of course he does on a regular basis. Do you think he practices? Yes. Do you think that he does things that are difficult so he can perform under pressure? Yes. So if you're not doing all those things as an individual in your career, in your life, with your family, with your kids, then chances are your marble jar isn't very full. And when it comes to the difficult decisions or the opportunities, you're mentally not ready. You'll talk yourself out of it. You'll miss it. You won't even see it. So until you do that inner work, Jamie, that you're doing and that people in GoBundance are doing and you're surrounded by other people doing it, then you're going to be obese in some of your decisions that won't serve you because that'll be normal for you. And what we're doing is we're saying, get in a room if you're overweight mentally with a bunch of athletic, healthy people. And you're going to go, oh, oh, maybe I won't have that can of Coke. Maybe I will have that glass of water instead. And before you know it, you become thinner and thinner metaphorically with your thoughts, you make better decisions, you're more agile, you move around better, people are complimenting you, you get more confident and before you know it, you've got four or five doors, you're showing up with other people that are doing it and it becomes your new normal. Just because people are eating McDonald's two and a half times a week, it may seem normal, but it ain't freaking natural. Yeah. So you want to get around people that are naturally succeeding. And that's this whole concept that, that you and I are part of. It's true. And it, and it, and it shoots off of that. Like, so you start to recognize in your day-to-day -day life folks that may not be in one of these communities that are, that are high level and that you want to be around. My, my business partners, I mean, Ben, Derek, Kelly, I, you know, on many levels, uh, uh, you know, they're health focused, they're smart, they're driven, they're passionate. Um, you know, just even that, like they're, they're not in any of these communities, but uh, but I've found them, right? It's uh, my, the, I don't know, the universe brought me to them, if you will, because I've, I've gotten used to being around high level people on the regular, um, you know, through M1, through GoBundance. And even to your point, uh, as I got to meet and know people uh, in communities like M1 and GoBundance, 
Um, tactically, I changed, a, you know, so I would, I would uh, on the drive home from work, rather than calling a coworker like I had for the last 20 years, you know, to bitch about the day, I'm calling one of these, one of these GoBundance or M1 folks, because even if we're going to, you know, even if we're going to have a grievance or whatever, it's just, you know, you, you pull yourselves out of it way faster. And it just leveled up my mindset to your point about mastering meaning, right? I was able to, I was able to determine what's great about whatever happened that day versus, you know, sulking or going home and drowning myself in Netflix or whatever the case may be. Um, it forced action. So yeah, I, you know, the, the, you're right. There's a lot of masterminds out there. Um, I don't know how good some are and some aren't, um, but what you've created uh, with both has been, I mean, not just for me, but for many, very life-changing. And within that, you have what's known as the I am movement. You touched on it a moment ago, the words that follow I am, follow you. But can you expand on that? Because the I am movement, uh, while you'll explain it well, when I was in person with you in Montreal, uh, we had an I am sort of walk and that walk alone for me was probably the biggest transformational moment I've had in my life. And that's no bullshit, right? So, so what is the I am movement? Why is it important? Just talk through that if you could for me, please. So when I was young, my brothers and sister called me pizza face because I had a lot of acne and I spent the next 20 years of my life repeating that to myself, feeling ugly and feeling as though the world was looking at me as though I had acne all over my face. And I made it bigger than it was until I came across somebody who reprogrammed my brain for me. And he said, you keep on telling yourself you're ugly. You keep on telling yourself you have pizza face. Look, um, let's change the label of that. And the more that, you know, neuroscience will tell you that what you say repeatedly to yourself becomes a self-fulfilling prof prophecy. So if you get up and you say, you know, I'm, I'm lazy or, um, I'm too short or I'm too tall or I don't have the contacts. If you keep on saying that to yourself, that's the reality you'll attract to yourself. That's the lens you'll see the world through. So when I understood this, I just changed the label to ruggedly handsome and I built my confidence and changed the way I saw myself. And once I saw the effects of that, I just used it for other areas of my life. I went from working hard at farm kid to working smart. I went from somebody who didn't have good contacts to somebody that attracted really great people into my life. And I started to change the way I saw myself. Part of the process we went through at that event you're talking about is that it's natural for most of us to talk negatively to ourselves because our brain wants to protect us. So we often cushion, you know, if you, if so, if you think you're really great and then a bunch of people tell you you're an idiot, then you feel like maybe I better be careful how I, I'm not showing up the way I should. So you cushion yourself and you start going, well, maybe I am not good enough. And we all have that fear. So you've, if you want to shift the results in your life on some fundamental la la level, Jamie, you've got to choose a new label for yourself because we've all been programmed with limitation. Somebody told us will never amount to much. You were picked last, um, you know, at recess at school for the local pickup game of whatever it was, basketball or whatever, and you felt like a loser. And somebody said, yeah, well, I picked you last because you're too short or, or you don't run fast. But we've carried that on into our life. So I consciously now say I'm gifted, guided, grateful, powerful, passionate, playful, sexy, sensual, sensitive, and blessed. And I choose the words to empower myself and to program myself. So whoever's listening to this, you have words that you say to yourself on a regular basis that I promise you are disempowering. And until you change them, you're just going to live that out. Do you think that the rock, not me, the rock says to himself, he's a loser. He'll never amount to much. Uh, you know, I follow him on Instagram. This is a guy who watches his words. This is a guy who believes anything is possible. You know, work harder than anybody else. And that's what he does. And look at the results. Highest paid actor in Hollywood. And, um, and he failed at being, you know, a football player. He failed at, at, at a lot of things. But today he's reinvented himself. So I'm a believer, Jamie, you can reinvent yourself by programming yourself. You just have to choose the words that follow I am. And you can become whatever you want. I'm dyslexic and and was never good at spelling. I still can't remember half the time, whether it's I or E before E or after C or whatever it is. And yet I've written three books because I learned from Robert Kiyosaki, you don't have to be a best writing author, but you can be a best selling author. 
So when you hang around people and, and Robert Kiyosaki has been a, a mentor of mine. And last year I shared the stage with him in Phoenix, Arizona. I was sitting on the stage and he was sitting beside me watching me speak to the audience. I have a picture of it. And I'm like, how far have I come? Mm-hmm. Right. This little farm kid in Montreal. So I, I, I talk to people and I say, I don't care where you are in your life. As big as you can think, visualize, dream, that's as far as you can go if you're willing to put in the effort and rechange your own programming. And that makes it pretty exciting. So that's what that is all about. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's very empowering. You mentioned about the words you use are disempowering sometimes to, to speak to yourself. I've also said and heard, you know, you would never say to somebody else, your best friend, the words you say to yourself, right? Like if you were to literally unpack the speech that you, you know, say, oh, I'm so dumb, I'm such an idiot, this, that, and the other. You would never say that to a friend or a family member or your mother or, or anybody like that. So why would you say it to yourself? And again, that's a concept, maybe it's nuanced, but it's a concept that, uh, that fell flat for me until I started to, to really get around people who made that, that behavior of speaking highly of yourself and, and using the I am normal and you know okay. It wasn't goofy. It wasn't weird. It was the right thing to do. Um, this morning, I mentioned getting up early. Uh, And you talked about, you know, being the master of meaning, Uh, you know, we call it rule number nine, right? So um, this morning I woke up at 420, exhausted. I went to bed way too late and got up at 420. I was doing my meditation, doing my visualization. I do my journaling. I do that all uh, on my iPhone because I learned to do that when my four-year-old at the time who was three was sleep regressing. And I figured out I had to do my miracle morning laying next to him because he won't sleep unless I'm here. So I got to do it all electronically where I don't have to move. So I'm doing all that stuff. And then I had a 5.30 a.m. spin class I had to go to. And I was like, I can't, I, I just, I can't, I can't go to this class today. <laughs> so I, I went, I went late, the door was locked. I just went to the gym and did an, a, a half-assed workout. It was like a, a good momentum to the start of the day. And then it kind of crashed on me and that carried through the day for me. That would have been a game, like a, like not a game shooter, but like a knockout blow for me before. Oh, geez, what an idiot. Oh, I can't believe I did this or whatever. But, you know, it just was, again, these are skills I've learned and I didn't even try. Whereas in the past, you know, the phase of learning I was at, it would have been something I had to be consciously aware of. Um, now I'm not. It's unconscious for me to go, okay, it's a day. I'll move on. Tomorrow will be a, tomorrow will be a better day. I'll try again in the morning and I'm not going to hate on myself all day because I had you know, not the day I, I was maybe expecting of myself. So those are the types of skills that when you get around like-minded people, driven people, those sorts of things that uh, to me really, really uh, uh, make a difference in, in the trajectory that somebody can, that somebody can take themselves on. So anyway, not a question in there, more of a statement, but go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was just going to add Jamie that um, self-forgiveness is a thing that is not a common conversation in the, in the office, you know, and we're human we're going to make mistakes so you got to be able to forgive yourself and let that go some of the greatest books and things that i keep on revisiting are the untethered soul the surrender experiment um a book called letting go and it's really you know this whole conversation we have is i should have i should have bought more real estate after the 2008 crash i should have done this i should have done that you know when i sold my business in 2006 i took um, i got a million dollars from the sale of it and I had a balance to sale for 3 million. I took the million, I put it in the stock market. I, within six months, it was worth 2.8 million. I was incredibly cocky. I made a whole bunch of decisions. Long story short, within a year, it was all gone. I lost it all. And I didn't have a mastermind group. I was making all the decisions naked on my own, thinking I was so great. And I was living it up and down. I'd make $30,000 in a day and I'd tell my wife and she'd run out and buy clothes. And the next day I'd lose $30,000 and I'd head to the bar and have a few drinks. And, you know, even with everything I knew about psychology and and all that sort of thing, I still found myself on a roller coaster ride. But, Jamie, it was a bigger roller coaster ride. So when I, you know, I lost $200,000 in a week, I mentally felt like I didn't have the reframe ability without a couple of drinks. And And I went there. So it doesn't matter where you're at, you're gonna have a new lesson for yourself and a new learning. So the training's always in, you gotta be able to forgive yourself and get up the next day and get at it again. Life is way too short to not be happy every day. And that's the part that I'm more in the spiritual zone now is regardless of the external results that I'm getting, what is my internal experience? 
can I still be happy with my family and with my kids around the table when my bank account went down 30 grand? And if I can't, then I need to do some more work because that's the work that's important to me today. And for somebody, it might be $3,000 loss today, or it might be just, you know, a deal they missed. But what's your inner psychology? That's the part that nobody can take away from you. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, uh, on that point of, um, you know, going higher and that's a, a bigger place to fall from. I got this text today from somebody in GoBundance, uh, a Ray Dalio series on, on uh, YouTube. It's an eight part series. I don't know if you've seen it, but just started watching episode one. And that's what he talks about is kind of falling up. So yeah, you trip, you fall, you keep climbing. And yeah, the higher you are, the bigger chance, not the bigger chance, but the more, if you do fall, it's a farther fall down. But I think your point has been always, you know, you, your, your level of problems as you grow and become a bigger person, they grow. So a level two problem today becomes a level five problem, becomes a level seven problem. And the mindset and the self-work and all the stuff that you do on yourself lets you become that level 10 person who crushes level eight problems, right? They're, they're, they're first thing in the morning type of things that you do and knock them out. Um, so you want level 10 problems, right? It's kind of a mindset shift in that. You want level 10, right? You want the bigger problems because those bigger problems challenge you to become bigger and they drive you eventually upward. Even if you fall all the way down and you've mentioned you've gone, you've gone bust at least twice, if I'm not mistaken, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes. you know, and, and here you are sitting in Croatia at two in the morning uh, talking to us, which is fantastic. Yeah, as you, as you uh, outlined in the beginning with a six figure a month passive income stream coming in so that you can live life in any way that you want to, you want to live it. And you've taken those lessons and have applied it. So you didn't let failure keep you down. And, uh, and man, it's just a huge inspiration, huge inspiration to, to me and to everybody else that, uh, that knows you and that's on this call, I'm sure. So Rock, we only had a couple minutes left. Where should people uh, look you up, find out more about you? What's the, what's the best way for people to get, get to know you a little bit more and get a hold of you? Man? Yeah. Uh, rockthomas.com is my website. <clears throat> um, easiest way is to go there and they can surf around at some of the things we're doing. Social media, um, pretty big on Instagram and Facebook. So we do some lives, we do some free content. Um, and of course, you mentioned it before, goM1.com if they're interested in getting more into the inner circle. That's not for the lighthearted because we go pretty hard in that, in that group and you've got to pass a bunch of interviews before we we um, allow members into the group. We usually accept one out of about three people. Um, but our real, you know, the real part that if you're somewhere between 28 and probably 42 and you're making more than $75,000 a year, you got more than a high school education. Um, and believe it or not, you're married and you have kids. We've broken down our avatar. Those are the people that we have the most success at accelerating their life. Doesn't mean that there's not other people that we don't help. But that's just been kind of the, the sweet spot because those people are usually serious about making an improvement in their life. And they've already got some momentum that we can throw gasoline on their fire and accelerate it. We've helped people that are 19 years old and we've helped people that are you know, 60 years old improve their life. But if you're in that range, you're probably the, the, the area that we help the most. Go to goM1.com, fill out the application. We have a conversation there. And then uh, other than that, mainly, mainly social media, Jamie. Beautiful. And I'll, I'm going to double plug M1 because it's been a big deal for me. Uh, like I said, go check out my success stories. I, it's actually, like I said, I just found it like a week ago. Just go to M1, go M1 doc, m1.com. I think there's a success stories link. And I'm right at the top. Check it out. It's, it's kind of cool. There I am. And it's really well produced. I don't know who did it, who produced it for you, but it's really, really well done. I even, I, I was like, I, I like watching this guy, meaning me. So it was, it was pretty cool. But well, well, uh, check out goom1.com. Oh. Yeah, for the people listening to this, is I mean, um, I don't know how well you shared your story with them, but I've watched you transform, not just as an investor in real estate, but as an individual, as a, as a father, as a husband. And I think that's credit to your investment, not only in your financial garden, but you as a person. And I think that, you know, if, if people aren't aware of that, you don't attract more financially into your life until you've worked on, you know, the inner conversation you're having and you've done a great job of that. And you now are having a lot of success and you're inspiring other people. So um, let me take this chance to say congratulations on the work you've done for yourself. And I'm, I'm proud of you as a father could be proud of us as a son, but as a, um, as a colleague on this planet, um, it's nice that you've leveled up your world and it's fun to see you continue to do so. So great job. 
You're going to get me emotional here, man. So thank you. Thank you. I'm all like weirded out. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. That means uh, coming from you, that means a ton. Uh, and if anyone here has any other questions about some of the stuff I've done, if, if I haven't shared enough of my story, please reach out. Happy to tell anybody about uh, what I've done. If you have questions about some of the stuff that Rock offers uh, with M1 or other, other, uh, other uh, groups that he belongs to or he oversees, um, more than happy to talk through it with anybody. But uh, Rock, I really appreciate it. It's three o'clock in the morning where you are. Go get some sleep. And uh, I hope you have an amazing evening. And I, again, I can't thank you enough for, uh, for, for everything tonight. Thank you again. Well, you know how we roll. I give you my word. So it doesn't matter whether it's two o'clock in the morning, the other side of the world, we, um, we make it happen no matter what. So well, blessings to you. Remember that the words that follow I am follow you. Say yes to some things that uh, make you a little uncomfortable because that's going to force you to grow. And when things go sideways, ask yourself a better question, something like what's great about this or what's the lesson I'm supposed to get. And most recently, I keep on asking myself, how do I want to handle this? When something happens, how do I want to handle it? It's almost like somebody came up to me and said, you know, something happens to you, Jamie. And somebody said, well, how are you going to handle that, Jamie? And pause and think, well, how do I want to handle this? Like a rock star or like a loser, like a victim? And hopefully you choose, you know, a really high-minded way of handling your life because that's the choice that we get to do. So uh, grab life big, brother. All right, brother. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful evening, and uh, we'll talk soon. Good night. All right. See ya.